I'm on? Oh, good. Good, good, good. So just like uh, Mark said, I do think I'm kind of a big deal, so I, I assume you already know that I'm Darlinda McTuck, but it was nice that Melanie said my name just in case. And also for Amanda, I want a pair of those that you can't, those kangaroo something, right? I want some of those. Jeez, those are awesome looking and fun. All right, so I'm doing a little spark talk. Invention literacy. Hmm. Literacy. We hear the word literacy, and I would imagine you would think of things like reading and those sorts of things, and then we throw in the word invention. Now, I have some heroes in my life. We all have people that inspire us. Thomas Edison, I'm sure you recognize he would be on your left, holding what he's famous for, the light bulb. And of course, Henry Ford on the right. He's not famous for inventing the car. No, no, no. For the assembly line. All right, so two great inventors. Here's the thing. I've heard words today like inspire, believe. Well, guess what? Henry Ford and Thomas Edison were best friends. They weren't just acquaintances. The story goes that Henry Ford actually worked for Thomas Edison as a night engineer at the Edison Electric Company. And Edison was Ford's hero. He had a chance to speak to him and he said, hey, I'm working on this gas powered car. Now Edison's all electric. Henry Ford, the story was that when he told Edison that, that Edison slammed his fist on the table and said, that's what you have to do because your car will have its own source of power. So they encouraged each other. Now I don't know if you know who this person is. Guess what, that's Harvey Firestone. If you think things just casually happen in our world, that everyone is independent and no collaboration or suddenly collaboration is a 21st century skill, hello, as long as there have been humans, there has been communication and collaboration. And up here, actually, uh, President Harding is in that picture. So you can imagine the conversations, how they incurred each other. So not only did they have to believe in themselves, but they also believed in each other and inspired each other. This is what is going on in the classroom. This is what Amanda spoke to. You have to believe in the students. You have to believe in yourself so that you can take those beautiful risks, which is what these men were doing. So the Firestones were not on the Fords by accident. It was a friendship. Now, I would imagine you've heard the term makey makey, which is in, in its simplest form is an electronic invention kit for all ages. It was part of the maker movement. Then comes maker fairs. Think of show and tell back in the day. So I, was in, I entered kindergarten in 1970, so when it was show and tell, you showed up with something and you talked about it, okay? The maker fair is the same idea. So people make things, and please don't think these are robotics or you know Legos or things like that. It could be somebody making something, knitting, baking, whatever that person is making, they bring it to the Maker fair, and they share what they learn. So guess what? If you Google who invented Makey Makey, you will get Jay Silver. Now, not just Jay Silver, there is Eric Rosenbaum there at the bottom. So they're given credit for the Makey Makey, so now what I'd like you to, I don't know if I, if I do that, will it go beyond him or will he start? No, could you click on it for, oh, okay, let me go back, sorry. So Melanie's going to click on that. It's, it's brief, about a minute. I think the new revolution that's right on the tip here is invention literacy. So what that means is not a literacy of communicating ideas with words or abstractions like mathematics, but a new type of literacy where like they say at Media Lab, demo or die is the new version of publish or perish in academia. We're going to create the future in our hands, not talk about ideas. So invention literacy, if it spreads the way that traditional literacy has spread, let's say we penetrate 95% invention literacy, that means everyone understands the objects in the world and create new ones. The world will be reinvented instantaneously, and invention literacy is the 21st century literacy, even more than coding, even more than mathematics, the ability to recreate our existence. Don't try to figure out what the world needs. Instead, figure out what makes you come alive. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. So go do that. Hi, I'm Jay Silver. I want to live in a world built by all of us. So I work on unleashing people's inherent potential 
to repurpose and change and build the world we live in. I don't know why he put his intro at the end. I don't know. But that was Jay Silver, the man who was credited as being part of, you know, the Makey Makey and the whole maker movement. So he gave you a nice little definition of in invention literacy. And, you know, again, going and doing what inspires you, what you like. Now it does not want to go forward, so that's going well. But let's think about this with the invention literacy. Uh, Mike was, he was showcasing in his Spark Talk, he was showcasing some things that students were doing. So again, these students were doing things, creating things, not just, you know, sitting in a classroom and hearing about things, they were actually doing. So he was talking about that you know, make or, make or die, as he said. So demos, even the new science standards bring in the term demo. So again, models, things along those lines. I need you to click on that, that picture, please. Now, kid entrepreneurs, uh, Mike did speak of uh, student voice. I mean, oh, that's okay, I'll just go back. Is it, there we go. What I'm gonna need you to do is scroll down just a little bit here for me. Scroll a little bit, a little bit. So. Uh, we'll stop. The first one, I'll need you to stay there and scroll for me, please. The first one is a young lady who really wanted to promote healthy cooking and eating, so she started a blog. She's now in college. Go a little further. The next young lady, does it say, does it, Zollipops. She made sugar-free lollipops so kids didn't have to have cavities but could still eat something sweet. Keep going. I think my next little, oh, this young lady. This young lady took a family recipe for hair care and turned it into a business. Keep going, please. I, okay, skip that guy. He made a lot of money, good for him. No, I'm just kidding. This, this, I love this little guy. He wanted bow ties, but he couldn't find bow ties, so he made bow ties. All right, let's see. Um, why can't I see what that person is doing? What do you see there? Oh my gosh, the young lady lemonade. So the honeybees, oh my gosh, the honeybees. They're in trouble. So what she did is she actually made lemonade and used local honey to sweeten it, to raise money to save the honeybees. So it's kind of unique. She used her own product to save them. I'll get over here. I forget I can see right here. Keep going. Oh my gosh, I love these two. So this is a brother and sister. They started out with a blender outside the house. They're making a few snow cones. And now they have a food truck. All right, keep going. That's pretty awesome. Okay, this is, this is a gentleman. Ah, let's keep going. All right, and then this last young man, he, he started different, different businesses. And then actually the, the last girl, this origami owl, you know, origami is something the kids do. She turned that into a business. So when I see, you can go back to my presentation, please, Melanie. What, what I see here are, are kids that have a voice, that are doing things. They found a need. They, were, they found something either missing in their life or something that was already in their life, and they made it better. So again, this is something like when I hear, or when I heard Amanda talk, I'm thinking, you know what? That's what Amanda is promoting in her classroom, is student thinking, student creativity. That's what would promote this. Okay. All right, speaking of promoting, Gimkip, I'm gonna uh, come down. What I, what I need you to do, I know this is crazy, but please get out your phone, because what you're gonna do is you're gonna, we've heard of things like Kahoot, We've heard of those. This is now GimKit. I'm gonna let you experience it and then I'll tell you something about it. I just have to make sure, it's only gonna be a minute, you can do it. So what I'm gonna do is hit continue. So notice you're gonna go to gimkit.com slash play. You can do it right on your phone. Trust me, try this out. So again, we've heard of Kahoot, things like that. So go to gimkit.com slash play. You're gonna type in that code. I'll give, a, give people a chance to, it's only gonna last for a minute when you play, so just so you can experience it a little bit. A few more people, are only two people awake? No. What, is it, is it give, oh, is it like that internet speed connection kind of thing? Uh, oh, happy, happy, I like that. All right, oh, oh, get your little, oh, what am I saying? I'm like, you're right there, sorry. Oh, look at, okay, we got quite a few, oh, look at that. See, all of a sudden connecting. Even number, oh, 19, can we get 20? 19 might be it. Oh, 20, okay, I'm gonna start the game. You only get a minute.
So the game has ended. The game has ended. So, oh, maybe not quite. All right. So whoever it, it's going to give us some results here. Pat was first. Pat earned the most money. So did, if you played it, you realize if you got it right, you earned money. If you got it wrong, you lost money. So in the end, you had so much money because you can actually purchase things. Let me give you a clue. A kid made this. A high school kid made this. This wasn't a company. This was a high school kid. So I can see reports and whatnot. But what I want to take you back to is so the GIM kit, when I click on play, I'm just going to show you real briefly here, you have choices. So you can do it in a team mode. You can have it classic where you're one-on-one. -on -one. You can choose how it's going to be. Like everybody has to get a certain amount of money and it stops. Uh, you can give starting cash, handicap, so you can only lose so much. Okay, uh, the music, all sorts of things. How long the game is played. So again, this was actually set up by a kid. This wasn't, this was not, this was not, you know, a company. This was an adult. So it was a high school kid created this. This is how they wanted to have an interactive online learning tool, an assessment tool. So a kid created that, GIM kit. So again, it's all about the kids. Regardless of whether you're in the classroom, whether you're the administrator, the techs, there was that whole list of people that were supporting, right? The supportinators. Understand that it really does take a village to raise a child, okay? So whether you're, you know, whatever your role is, you're not just that. You're part of a whole big picture for that one kid. So we have to believe in the kids no matter our role and we have to inspire them. And again, this is what I've heard in the different Spark Talks, TIFF Talks, Inspire and Believe. It's funny, I was driving here and I'm like, oh my gosh, why didn't I wear my Stay Amazed sweatshirt? I so missed an opportunity. But you know what? I thought, I'll find a picture of it. And I found this lady wearing that sweatshirt. And to me, she inspires me more than I think I would have if I had worn the sweatshirt. Because first of all, she's not 20. Okay, she, she, she is older than me, I'm going to say. And you know what? You really do need to stay amazed because if you keep your why close by, and, and actually uh, Mike mentioned your why, you must know your why. In the classroom, in the schools, you're in chaotic and stressful times. Remember why you came into education. Stay close to your why because if your why is true to you, you will stay inspired. Stay with your why. So believe in you first. Keep yourself inspired. You stay amazed. Yesterday was 30 years we've had the web. I'm still amazed by the web. I'm still amazed that I can say, Alexa, what's the temperature in Jamestown, New York today? And she spits it right out. I'm like, whoa, stay amazed. Or I see a blue sky or I see those first flowers in spring. Stay amazed. But again, remember your why. Keep it close to you. And when the world gets a little crazy, when you go off the rails on your crazy train, just revisit your why and stay inspired and believe in you. Thank you.